you've estimated that we'll have AGI by 2030. Um, so there's interesting questions around that. How will we actually know that we got there? Uh, and uh, what may be the move, quote, move 37 of AGI? My estimate is sort of 50% chance by in the next five years. So, you know, by 2030, let's say. And uh, so I think there's a good chance that that could happen. Part of it is what, what is your definition of AGI? Of course, people are arguing about that now. And, and uh, mine's quite a high bar and always has been of like, can we match the cognitive functions that the brain has, right? So we know our brains are pretty much general Turing machines, approximate. And of course, we created incredible modern civilization with our minds. So that also speaks to how general the brain is. And um, for us to know we have a, a true AGI, we would have to like make sure that it has all those capabilities. It isn't kind of a jagged intelligence where some things it's really good at, like today's systems, but other things it's really uh, flawed at. And, and that's what we currently have with today's systems. They're not consistent. So you'd want that consistency of intelligence across the board. And then we have some missing, I think, capabilities, like sort of uh, the true invention capabilities and creativity that we were talking about earlier. So you'd want to see those. How you test that, um, I think you just test it one way to do it would be kind of brute force test of tens of thousands of cognitive tasks that mm -hmm. um you know we know that humans can do uh and maybe also make the system available to uh, a few hundred of the world's top experts uh the terence towers of each each subject area and see if they can find you know give them give them a month or two and see if they can find uh, an obvious flaw in the system and if they can't then I think you're you're pretty uh, you know pretty you can be pretty confident we have a, a fully general system. Maybe to push back a little bit, it seems like humans are really incredible as the the intelligence improves across all domains to take it for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, Terence Tao, uh, the, these brilliant experts they might quickly in a span of weeks take for granted all the incredible things it can do and then focus in. Well, haha, right there. You know, I I consider myself. Uh, first of all, human. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> second, <laughs> I, yeah. I identify as human. Um, is this, I, you know, some people listen to me talk and they're like, that guy is not good at talking, <laughs> the stuttering, the, you know. <laughs> so, like, even humans have obvious across domains limits, uh, even just outside of, of course. Calc mathematics and physics and so on. It, I, I wonder if it will take something like a move 37. So on the positive side versus yeah. like a barrage of 10,000 cognitive tasks yeah. where it would be one or two where it's like, Yes. Holy shit. This so is I think special. There are, exactly. So I think there's the sort of blanket testing to just make sure you've got the consistency. But I think there are the sort of lighthouse moments mm -hmm. like the Move 37 that, w that I would be looking for. So one would be inventing a new conjecture or a new hypothesis about physics like Einstein did. So maybe you could even run the back test of that very rigorously, like have a cutoff of knowledge cutoff of 1900 and then give the system everything that was, you know, that was written up to 1900 and then and then see if it could come up with special relativity and general relativity, right? Like Einstein did. Mm -hmm. That that would be an interesting test. Another one would be, can it invent a game like Go? Not just come up with Move 37, a new strategy, but can it invent a game that's as deep, as aesthetically beautiful, as elegant as Go? And those are the sorts of things I would be looking out for uh, uh, and probably a system being able to do uh, uh, several of those things, right? For it to be very general, um, not just one domain. And so I think that would be the signs, at least that I would be looking for, that we've got a system that's AGI level. And then maybe to fill that out, you would also check the consistency, you know, make sure there's no holes in that system system either. Yeah, something like a, a new conjecture or scientific discovery. That would be a cool feeling. Yeah. That would be amazing. So it's not not just helping us do that, but actually coming up with something brand new. And you would be in the room for that. And I so it, it would be like probably two or three months before announcing it. Mm -hmm. And you would just be sitting there <laughs> trying not to tweet. <laughs> something like that exactly it's like what is this amazing new yeah. you know physics uh, idea and then we would probably check it with world experts in that domain yeah. right and validate it and kind of go through its workings and it, i guess it would be explaining its workings too um yeah be an amazing moment do you worry that we as humans even expert humans like you might miss it might well, miss 
it may be pretty complicated. So it could be the analogy I give there is I don't think it will be um, uh, uh, totally mysterious to the to the best human scientists, but it may be a bit like, for example, in chess, if I was to talk to Gary Kasparov or Magnus Carlsen and play a game with them and they make a brilliant move, I might not be able to come up with that move, but they could explain why afterwards that move made sense. And we would be able to understand it to some degree. Not to the level they do, but in, you know, if they were good at explaining, which is actually part of intelligence too, is being able to explain in a simple way that what you're thinking about. Um, uh, I, I think that that would be very possible for the best human scientists. But I wonder, maybe you can you can educate me on the side of Go. I wonder if there's moves for Magnus or Gary where they at first will dismiss it as a bad move. Yeah, sure, it could be. But then afterwards, they'll figure out with their intuition that that this why this works, and then and then and then empirically, the nice thing about games is one of the great things about games is you can it's, it's a sort of scientific test. Does it do you win the game or not win? And then um, that tells you, okay, that move in the end was good. That strategy was good. And then you can go back and analyze that and 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 and, and explain even to yourself a little bit more why. Explore around it, and that's how chess analysis and things like that work. So perhaps that's why my brain works like that because I've been doing that since I was four. And you're trained, you know, tra it's sort of hardcore training in that way. But even even now, like when I generate code, th there is this kind of nuanced, fascinating con contention that's happening where. I might at first identify as a set of generated code as incorrect in, in some interesting nuanced ways. But then I'm always have to ask the question, is there a deeper insight here that, that I'm the one who's incorrect? Mm -hmm. And th that's going to, as the systems get more and more intelligent, you're gonna have to contend with that. It's like, what, what, what do you, is this a bug or a yes. feature of what you just came up with? Yeah, and they're gonna be pretty complicated to do, but of course it will be, you can imagine also AI systems that are producing that code or whatever that is, and then human programmers looking at it, but also not unaided with the help of AI tools as well. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be kind of an interesting, you know, maybe different AI tools to the ones yeah. that the more, you know, kind of monitoring tools are the ones that generated it. So if we look at an AGI system, Sorry to bring it back up, but yeah. Alpha Evolve, super cool. So Alpha Evolve enables on the programming side, something like recursive self-improvement, uh, potentially. Like what, if we can imagine what that AGI system, maybe not the first version, but a few versions beyond that, what does that actually look like? Do you think it will be simple? Do you think it will be something like a self-improving program in a simple one? I mean, potentially that's possible, I would say. Um, I'm not sure it's even desirable because that's a kind of like hard takeoff scenario. Yeah. But but you, you these current systems like Alpha Evolve, they have, you know, human in the loop deciding on various things. They're separate hybrid systems that interact. Uh, one could imagine eventually doing that end to end. I don't see why that wouldn't be possible. But right now, um, you know, I think the systems are not good enough to do that in terms of coming up with the architecture of the code. Um, and again, it's a little bit reconnected to this idea of coming up with a new conjectural hypothesis. How like they, They're good if you give them very specific instructions about what you're trying to do. Um, but if you give them a very vague high level instruction, that wouldn't work currently. Like, uh, And I think that's related to this idea of like invent a game as good as go. Right. Imagine that was the prompt. That's that's pretty underspecified. And so the current systems wouldn't know, I think, what to do with that, how to narrow that down to something tractable. And I think there's similar, like, look, just make a better version of yourself. That's too that's too unconstrained. But we've done it in, you know, in, and as you know, with Alpha Evolve, like things like faster matrix multiplication. Mm -hmm. So when you when you hone it down to a very specific thing you want, um, it's very good at incrementally improving that. But at the moment, these are more like incremental improvements, sort of small iterations. Whereas if, you know, if you wanted a big leap in, um, uh, understanding you need a you need a much larger uh, advance. Yeah, but it could also be sort of to push back against hard takeoff scenario. It could be just a sequence of um, incremental improvements, like matrix multiplication. Like it has to sit there for days thinking how to incrementally improve a thing, and that it does so recursively. And as you do more and more improvement, it'll slow down. Right. So there'll be a, like a like uh, the path to AGI won't be like a, a it'd be a gradual improvement over time. Yes. If it was just incremental improvements, that's how it would look. So the question is, could it come up with 
a new leap, like the Transformers architecture, yeah. right? Could it have done that back in 2017 when, you know, we did it and Brain did it? And it's it's not clear that that these systems, something like AlphaVolve wouldn't be able to do, make such a big leap. So for sure, these systems are good. We have systems, I think, that can do incremental hill climbing. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of bigger question about, is that all that's needed from here? Or do we actually need one or two more um, uh, big breakthroughs? And can the same kind of systems provide the breakthroughs also? So make it a bunch of S-curves like incremental improvement, but also every once in a while leaps. Yeah, I don't think anyone has systems that can sh have shown unequivocally those big leaps. That, 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 right, we have a lot of systems that do the hill climbing of the S-curve that you're currently on. Yeah, and that would be the move 37, is a leap. Yeah, I think it would be a leap, um, something like that. Uh, do you think the scaling laws are holding strong on uh, pre-training, post-training, test time, compute? Uh, do you... Uh... On the flip side of that, anticipate AI progress hitting a wall. We certainly feel there's a lot more room just in the scaling. So um, actually all steps, pre-training, post-training, and inference time. So uh, there's sort of three scalings that are happening co concurrently. Um, and we, again, there, it's about how innovative you can be and we you know we pride ourselves on having the broadest and um deepest research bench uh we have amazing you know incredible uh researchers and uh people like noam shazir who you know came up with transformers and and dave silver you know who led the AlphaGo project and so on and um it's 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 that research base means that if some new new breakthrough is required like an AlphaGo or transformers uh, i would back us to be the place that does that so i'm actually quite like it when the terrain gets harder right because then it veers more from just engineering to <laughs> yeah. to true research and you know re or research plus engineering and that's our sweet spot and I, I think that's harder it's harder to invent things than to than to um you know fast follow and um so you know we don't know i would say it's a it's kind of 50 50 whether new things are needed or whether the scaling the existing stuff is going to be enough and so in true kind of empirical fashion we're pushing both of those as hard as possible the new blue sky ideas and you know maybe about half our resources are on that and then and then uh scaling to the max the the current the current capabilities and um we're still seeing some you know fantastic progress on uh, each different version of gemini that's interesting the way you put it in terms of the deep bench that if uh, progress towards AGI is more than just scaling compute, so the engineering side of the problem, and is more on the scientific side where there's breakthroughs needed, then you feel confident DeepMind as well. Google did mine as well, positioned to yes. kick, kick ass in that domain. Well, I mean, if you look at the history of the last decade or 15 years, yeah. um, it's been, I mean, you know, maybe, I don't know, 80, 90% of the breakthroughs that mod, that underpins modern AI field today was from, you know, originally Google Brain, Google Research, and DeepMind. So, yeah, I would back that to continue, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on the data side, are you concerned about running out of high-quality data, especially high-quality human data? I'm not very worried about that, partly because I think there's enough data uh, or, and it's been proven to get the systems to be pretty good. And this goes back to simulations again. If you do you have enough data to make simulations or so that you can create more synthetic data that are from the right distribution? Obviously, that's the key. So you need enough real world data in order to be able to uh, uh, create those kinds of generator, data generators. And um, I think that we're at that step at the moment. Yeah, you've done a lot of incredible stuff on the side of science and biology, hmm. doing a lot with not so much data. Yeah. I mean, it's still a lot of data, but I guess enough take Get off. that going. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. Uh, how crucial is the scaling of compute to building AGI? This is a question that's an engineering question. It's a almost a geopolitical question hmm. because it also integrated into that is the supply chains and energy yes. a thing that you care a lot about, which is um, potentially fusion, yes. so innovating on the side of energy yeah. also. Do you think we're gonna keep scaling compute? I think so, for several reasons. I think compute, there's, there's the amount of compute you have for training, often it needs to be co-located so actually even like you know uh, bandwidth constraints between data centers can affect that so it's 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 there's additional constraints even there and that that's important for training obviously the largest models you can but there's also because now ai systems are in products and being used by 
billions of people around the world, you need a ton of inference compute now. Um, and then on top of that, there's the thinking systems, the new paradigm uh, of the last year that uh, where they get smarter, the longer amount of inference time you give them at test time. So all of those things need a lot of compute. And I don't really see that slowing down. Um, and as AI systems become better, they'll become more useful and there'll be more demand for them. So both from the training side, the training side actually is, is only just one part of that. It may even become the smaller part of, of what's needed yeah. um, uh, uh, in the overall compute that that's required. Yeah, that's one sort of almost meme kind of thing, which is like the success and the incredible aspects of VO3 there's like, uh, people kind of make fun of like the more successful it becomes the you know the servers are sweating yes exactly. <laughs> to do the inference. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly we did a little video of of, of the servers frying eggs and yeah. things and um that's right and 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 we're gonna have to figure out how to do that um there's a lot of interesting hardware innovations that we do as you know we have our own tpu line and we're looking at like inference only things inference only chips and how we can make those more efficient we're also very interested in building ai systems and we have done the help with energy usage so help um data center energy like for the cooling systems be efficient um grid optimization um and then eventually things like helping with uh, plasma containment fusion reactors. We've done lots of work on that with Commonwealth Fusion and also uh, one could imagine reactor design um, and then material design, I think is one of the most exciting new types of solar material, solar panel material, super room temperature superconductors has always been on my list of dream breakthroughs and um, optimal batteries. And I think a solution to any, you know, one of those things would be absolutely revolutionary for, you know, climate and energy usage. And we're probably close, you know, and again, in the next five years to having AI systems that can materially help with those problems.